This week, it's all about troubleshooting. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're on that drive for a thousand subscribers, so make sure to like and subscribe down below. Over the years, I've gotten pretty good at building guitar pedals. I started with strip board and designs on tag board effects, moved to some vero board designs, and then now I'm usually doing PCB builds. And with that has come a little bit of complacency. I tend to not do a lot of checking while I'm building my boards to make sure they're working. So every now and again, what happens is I get my pedal together, I go to turn on the effect, and I don't get anything. Sometimes it's just complete noise, sometimes it's no sound at all, sometimes it's just a weird effect. So what this week I want to do is give you some of the tips that I use to troubleshoot my pedals. So I thought a lot about what the best way is to actually logically go through troubleshooting a pedal, and I came up with this. This is what I'm calling the ultimate pedal troubleshooting chart. It's a flow chart that will essentially, essentially take you through the steps that I use in my brain when something isn't working on my pedals. So it's obviously a little bit too small to show here holding up to the camera. So what I'm gonna do is flip over to the computer. I'm gonna take you through all the steps in the flow chart and maybe point out some common mistakes people can make and why it would lead to that in the flow chart. So let's switch over to the computer. So now I've opened up the troubleshooting chart. I've called this version one because I look at this as a living document. I'm sure I'll expand upon it. If I get feedback from you guys, I'll also try to uh, uh, expand upon it as well. If you think I missed something, if I'm wrong somewhere, definitely point it out because I think this is something that can be useful to all of us pedal builders. So let's take a look at the first block. Does the LED turn on with the three pole double throw switch? So the foot stomp switch. Um, this is probably the first thing I call it the sanity check after I build my pedals. Um, does the LED engage? Does it light up when I, I hit that foot switch? Um, if we hit yes, we'll go down to some other stuff, but let's just think about the case where it's no, it does not. So if it doesn't light up, if the LED doesn't light up, the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the back of the pedal if it's not already removed and make sure that the LED is getting the required voltage. Now in a lot of cases, the required voltage is gonna be somewhere around nine volts. So it's nine volts supply through your current limiting resistor, it's gonna be a little bit less than nine volts. Uh, the reason I didn't just put nine volts here is because some pedals run off 18 volts. So just keep that in mind. If we don't get the required voltage there, then that means you have a supply issue. So either your supply is getting shorted, there's something wrong with your DC jack wiring, or your supply might be broken, and that's also something you need to check. If we do get that required voltage, the next thing we need to look at is our LED seated correctly. So do we have the anode in the right spot, the cathode in the right spot? Um, I can put a picture up here to show you which way round go, it goes, but for the most part, your anode is your long leg of your LED. And if that's not put in there properly, then, um, you know, you're going to obviously not get the LED to light up and you're gonna to need to swap the LED anode and cathode. If you're getting the required voltage and if your LED is seated correctly, then you likely have a broken LED and that would bring us to this block here where you do need to replace the LED. So take your solder sucker out, remove that LED, put in a new one. Backtracking to if the LED does turn on with a three pole double throw. Then we need to go down here and follow the chart and start asking some new questions. So the first question is, do you get bypass sound when the pedal is off? So when you don't have the pedal on, are you getting sound? Let's take a look at the no flow right now. So the first thing we ask is, is the pedal true bypass? If the pedal is true bypass and you're not getting any sound when the pedal is off, then you likely have shorts, audio jack wiring issues or an issue with your three pole double throw function. And when I say audio jack wiring issues, one thing that's very common, common mistake, is see these types of audio jacks. Sometimes if you tighten them too much and they're a poorly made jack, you can actually short them out. So that's one thing I've run into in the past. Your audio jacks are just tightened too much. Um, again, you could get shorts as well. So, uh, you know, case shorts, I think I have the back of this one here. You know, if I put this on and it's actually shorting out maybe one of my audio jacks or something else on the board, um, when my pedal is off, uh, 
if I have true bypass, it should work because it's not touching the effects board. So it's likely a short somewhere in your circuit. And then lastly, three pull double throw uh, switch functions. You know, it, you could have a bad switch. It could be engaged and it's sending stuff to your effects board when it shouldn't be. If your pedal isn't true bypass, then it's likely buffered bypass. And we need to move on to this block here. And here we ask, do we get sound when the pedal is on? So when the effect is engaged. If we're getting sound when the effect is engaged, but not when the effect is not engaged and it's a buffered bypass circuit, then obviously we have an issue in the buffered bypass part of the circuit. And that's represented by this block here. If we don't get sound when the pedal is off and we don't get sound when the pedal is on, whether buffered bypass or true bypass, we are going to move down here and go through this no in the flowchart. So at this point, we're not getting sound when the pedal is on. We're not getting sound when the pedal is off. So here, what we need to do is check to make sure that the effects board is getting the required voltage and the audio in. And you would actually do the voltage with a multimeter here, and you would do the audio in with say an oscilloscope. And this is just a handy little oscilloscope that I actually built 50 bucks on Amazon, I think, but good to have an oscilloscope around when you're probing your DIY pedals. So if we don't get the required voltage or audio in, we need to check the connections from the off board to the effects board. So if we assume that we've already checked the nine volt supply to say the uh, three pole double throw um, PCB or the switch, um, what we need to then do is make sure that that nine volts or 18 volts is getting from there to the effects board. Similarly, we need to make sure the uh, audio from the jacks, which we've already checked above, is getting into uh, the effects board as well. So if the pedal is getting the audio in and the voltage required, then we are looking at something on the effects board that likely is the issue. And I've put one situation that's pretty common, and that is if your DIY pedal has transistors, and that is have you set the biases on those transistors. So a lot of times you get small trim pots that are there to set biases on transistors. So you need to make sure that they're set properly so you get sound when the pedal is engaged. Um, so if you haven't set them, you're gonna go out this no port and you're gonna have to say, adjust those biases. And you can always check online to see how to do that. And if your pedal doesn't have transistors, you don't have to set biases, then you're looking at a lot of different things within the effects board. So that would be out the yes block here. So what I've put, and this is kind of a catch all that we can expand on maybe as this document grows, but you have an issue with your effects board. You need to check for shorts and opens. So maybe something isn't soldered to the board, like a cold solder joint or something that just a one leg didn't get soldered or shorts, you know, so did we, uh, here's an example. Uh, if you're using strip board here, Sometimes when you're soldering, you can run the solder between the two strips on the strip board. And you want to avoid trying to do that because you'll short out two runs together. And obviously that's not good if the circuit doesn't call for it. You want to investigate missing bad or incorrectly seated or incorrect valued components. So if you forgot to put in a resistor, if a capacitor is bad, if you've got a capacitor the wrong way around, that would be incorrectly seated or incorrectly valued components. Um, you know, if you put a capacitor in that's uh, 100 microfarads when it should have been one microfarad or one nano when it should have been one micro, those are all things that can happen. You also wanna check for known voltages with a multimeter. So again, back to our multimeter. And what I say about checking for known voltage is if you actually uh, look on a lot of the forms, you can find that someone has gone through similar types of issues as you, and they start saying, here's the voltages on the base collector and emitter of my transistor, and this is what they should be. So really good place to check forms. Uh, again, I always bring up uh, uh, tag board effects. It's a great spot to check. Lastly, uh, what you can do is use an oscilloscope to trace your signal. Uh, Usually the way I do it is I put in a test signal off my oscilloscope, just a square wave, uh, put that to the input of the effects board or the input of my input jack, either way, 
and then trace the signal. I usually start at the output of my through pole double throw, which is also the same as the input to my effects board. And I just trace it to see where my signal is lost. So scrolling down, just to remember where we came from here, uh, say we got sound when the pedal is off and we got sound when the pedal is on. The next question, which comes up a lot, is, is the output intermittent? So, you know, are we getting the effect and then not getting the effect or getting an output and not getting an output? And this has happened to me many times when I used to do uh, the strip board builds. And a lot of the times that was either, uh, I, I had something not soldered properly or I had a cold solder joint. And that is that, you know, the, basically the electrical connection isn't that great and it's uh, juddering around causing my signal to skip in and out. So that's probably the most common uh, mistake that's made by say new DIYers. They have some cold solder joints and then essentially when they plug it in, they might get that intermittent sound from their pedal. If the sound is there, but it's not intermittent, then the next question I would go to is, do all the control knobs affect the sound? So if I step through and I say, okay, regen, width, speed, is it all doing what it should be doing? Uh, if the answer to that is no, then what we need to do is isolate those affected potentiometers, right? And then measure each of those potentiometers to see if they have the correct resistance. Now we got to remember a lot of these potentiometers sit inside a circuit. So if it's 100K, it might not measure 100K, but really what you want to do is make sure that as you adjust it, the resistance is changing as it should. So again, remember you might have the middle, um, the middle leg of your potentiometer uh, soldered to say the number one or number three leg. So you might only get change in one direction but still you wanna make sure they're measuring as they should. This is also a good time to make sure that you've put the right valued resistors or potentiometers in there. If the measured resistance from your potentiometers are not measuring the correct resistance, then you're gonna to have to replace those affected potentiometers. And one common mistake that I had when I was starting, uh, I had some cheap potentiometers and I had my soldering iron up way too high and I was actually wrecking them every time I was soldering directly to the leg. So that's just a mistake I'm pointing out here that would affect this part of the flow chart. On the other side, if your measured pots resistance is correct, then you likely have an issue around the board, uh, sorry, around where that potentiometer connects into the board. So this is a good time to look at the schematic and see what values on the effects board are kind of around that affected potentiometer and you might see that maybe you put in a wrong valued capacitor or something like that. I've had that before, um, you know, wrong capacitor in the uh, feedback loop and all of a sudden my uh, gain uh, dial doesn't do what it's supposed to. So that's usually the best place to look is, uh, you know, if you're, not, if you're getting that correct resistance um, but it's not really doing anything, then obviously uh, you might have something in the circuit around that potentiometer. Backtracking again to do all the control knobs affect the sound. If this is the case, then likely what we're talking about is an effects board issue. It's going to be probably unique to the pedal that you're building. Uh, I've put again this same statement in here where we have an issue with the effects board, you know, check for shorts, opens, investigate missing bad incorrectly seated or incorrect valued components, and then check with a multimeter, check with a scope, and then where to start. And I think this block really boils down to noise. So we have noise in our signal. Um, so we're getting sound when it's off, we're getting sound when it's on. Everything's working kind of control wise, but we're not getting the sound that we would expect. Uh, and usually that's probably either something specific to the pedal or it's a noise issue. So let's just take a look at some uh, scenarios that I've put here. So the first one is you're getting everything sounding as it should, but you have an underlying hum or a high pitch whine. Uh, this one, uh, I've put a question here, does it have a charge pump? Uh, Cause this is a common mistake as well. If you're using a charge pump and you're getting a high pitch whine, then what you need to do is ensure that the uh, regulator that you're using is rated for audio. And that would be something like a TC1044S a max 1044S 
I think there's an IL7660S. Basically, you're looking for the S on the end of those regulator components. If you don't have that, it's not rated for audio and you're going to get a high pitch whine. If you don't have a charge pump and you're getting a hum or a high pitch whine, it's probably got something to do with your coupling capacitor. So your electrolytic capacitors on your input and your output, maybe you have them the wrong way around, maybe they're leaking, uh, but definitely check your electrolytic capacitors uh, if you have a whine as well. Another common noise problem is a pulsing noise. Um, this one is something that I see a lot with delay pedals. So this is likely an IC clock issue. So some of that uh, clocking you know, from a, a 2399 chip might be affecting your, your output signal. And usually the best kind of advice I can give for that, it's a hard one to troubleshoot, is check the smoothing capacitor. Um, so a lot of the times, kind of coming out of a clock signal, there is a little bit of a, a smoothing cap there that will uh, be used to just kind of um, soften any noise from the clock. The next one, which is a pretty common one as well, is a 60 hertz hum. Um, the best thing here, the best piece of advice I can give here is check the grounding between your audio jacks. A lot of the times, you know, this will sound just like you have uh, kind of your lead plugged into your amp, but not, not plugged into your guitar. That's kind of what a 60 hertz hum sounds like. Usually it's because maybe the ground is broken between your two audio jacks, so your input and your output audio jacks. Um, basically it's like an open, open circuit somewhere in there. And then lastly, uh, if you have an effect specific issue, and again, this is just another catch-all, uh, my suggestion here, like I said above, is read the forms, learn about your schematic. I've listed tag board effects and electro smash here. Uh, there's lots of other forms, obviously Reddit as well is a good spot. But yeah, that's the best, uh, the best advice I can give when you have an effect specific issue is you probably got to dig in a little bit more to what other folks have experienced when they built that same pedal. So I hope you guys like that discussion about my troubleshooting chart. This is something that I put together kind of for the community. I think it's something that could be built upon. Uh, I just tried to think logically how I would go about troubleshooting stuff. And I know there's tons of places for expansion. That's why I'm gonna put this on maybe Reddit. I'll maybe even link it down below, but definitely wanna get feedback from you guys, uh, feedback from forms and how we can get, you know, a version two, a version three, and really help a lot of folks out there that are having issues troubleshooting their DIY pedals. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. That's it for this week. I guess it's a bit of a short one, but hopefully very informative. Remember to like, subscribe down below, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot, guys.